Hi, my name is Joel Glagowski. I'm a member of the Georgia State University Library's Research Data Services Team, or RDS for short. This is the team responsible for judging the undergraduate Get Data Lit contest. So I put together an example presentation to give prospective contestants ideas about what a presentation might look like, or to find relevant and reliable sources for their own entries. This is my example presentation. It's called, Is the Economy Really the Best It's Ever Been? Here's the claim. On October 15th, 2019, the president tweeted, we now have the greatest economy in history. Now the president often makes these sorts of claims on Twitter and in other forums. And I don't really want to question whether or not the economy is in good shape or not. By most metrics, it is in pretty good shape. However, the claim that it's historically good is not quite accurate. So that's what I want to talk about in this presentation. This slide shows us the unemployment rate in the United States from the late 1940s until 2019. The unemployment rate is the percentage of people who do not have a job and who have actively been looking for work in the past four weeks. So I just wanted to point out this red line, the horizontal red line in the middle of the screen that shows the lowest the unemployment rate has been under Trump. That's 3.5%, which is pretty low. It's a pretty low unemployment rate. That's good. I'm not saying that it's, that's not a good number. But if we look over towards uh, the 1950s, early 1950s, and the late 60s, the unemployment rate has actually been lower than it is now. So it's not historically good. Um, another thing I wanted to point out is that the, the trend, the current trend in the unemployment rate started in about 2009. So you, we can see it's been dropping pretty sharply for the last 10 years. So when Trump makes these claims that the economy is the best it's ever been, I think that it's, that it's implied that he's responsible for these trends. And I just wanted to point out that that implied claim is questionable too, so that we can see this trend started about 10 years ago. This next chart shows us the labor force participation rate from the late 1940s through 2019. The labor force participation rate shows us the number of people who are in the workforce either working or actively seeking work. So it counts employed people plus unemployed people. And this chart is laid out similarly to the previous chart. So this red line shows us the highest, the labor force participation rate has been under Trump, and the, the grayed out section on the right represents the Trump years. So we can see just by following that red line that the labor force participation rate was a lot higher for about 40 years from like the late 70s through um, about 2013 the labor force participation rate was higher than it has been at, uh, at any time uh, since Trump's been president. And we can see that there is an upward trend so the last couple of years the labor force participation rate is increasing. So that, that means there, a, a bigger percentage of the population is, is working. So that's a good sign and it's good that it's going up. But this, this graph shows us that it's not historically good. And we should keep the labor force participation rate in mind when we're thinking about unemployment as well. So the unemployment rate does not include discouraged people who have given up looking for work. So if you haven't been seeking employment in the last four weeks, you're no longer considered unemployed even if you don't have a job. So the the lower labor force part participation rate is often indicative of problems with the job market. So it may, may cause sort of a, an artificial dip in the unemployment rate. So it looks artificially low. So again, the, the overall trend is good, but it's not historically good. So let's take a look at the next slide. This next slide deals with wealth inequality. So this chart here shows us the percentage of wealth held by the top 1%. So we can see 
again this section on the right the gray highlighted section represents Trump's presidency and we can see that uh, the top 1% has never um, held more wealth than it does now and this is actually not that good for the economy so this is bad why is this bad so why does it matter is wealth inequality actually bad for the economy well it turns out studies have shown that yes wealth inequality is bad for the economy I pointed out a few studies here coincidentally they were all published in 2015 and the first one shows that um, wealth inequality leads to a decrease in per capita income so while the top rich people are, are making more money most people in the economy are making less so it lowers the overall average in 2015 another study was done that um, found evidence that large income inequalities are are damaging to health and well-being of the of the society at large so that's not really great news another study done in 2015 shows that wealth inequality lowers disposable income and slows economic growth so the idea is like if you're uh, if you're a, an average person and you make a little bit more money you're probably going to put that money right back into the economy but if you're at the top one percent you don't necessarily uh, reinvest that money you put that money back into the economy so it, it does tend to slow economic growth when it's concentrated at the top one percent this next slide shows us manufacturing output from the 80s uh, to the end of 2019 so why is this important well it's important for a few reasons first Trump campaigned on saving factory jobs he wanted to keep factories open and and keep those uh, factory workers employed uh, but also it's important as a as an economic indicator so ma manufacturing output has often been used as a leading indicator for GDP growth it reflects consumer demand and interest rates it, it's also a sector that is a provider of high-wage jobs for people without college degrees so historically uh, when manufacturing output slows we see a decline in, in GDP so this it's not a great sign for the economy that the manufacturing output has declined in the last year so you can see since about 2018 outputs declined okay so we've been through a few different slides and we've talked a little bit about economic indicators and a little bit about what they mean so what can we conclude is the economy really the best it's ever been well I'm gonna say no I'm gonna say no it, it's not the best it's ever been it's not in bad shape it's actually in very good shape but it's not historically good here's a list of the sources I used for this most of my data I got from the the, from Fred the Federal Reserve Bank's data tool it's a free online source it's a great source of economic data so not only do they provide access to their own data but they aggregate data from the uh, Bureau of Economic Analysis and the Bureau of Labor Statistics so you can find uh, a lot of economic data from different ag US agencies so it's, it's a really good source to look at I would encourage you to look at it if you're considering doing a, a a presentation related to economics if you have questions about the contest please contact Mandy Swigart Hoba her email address is on this slide and if you're interested in finding out more about the contest you can follow that bit address as well thank you good luck <laughs>